I'm going to share an extreme view I have with all of you today. If I were to become president of the United States, I would make it illegal for the current ridiculously unhealthy fast food restaurants to operate. So when I heard McDonald's was getting sued for $900 million, I thought it was a good start. And then I realized McDonald's market cap of $175 billion means this lawsuit is gonna hurt their business about as badly as a fake guru sports better hurts the casinos. McDonald's brings in $20 billion of revenue every year. Are you kidding me? Who is still eating this unhealthy dog food? Well, apparently a lot of people like their ice cream and got pretty bummed out when the ice cream machines were down. Ice cream machine hackers sue McDonald's for $900 million. This story intrigued me enough to dig a little deeper and spend a full day reading a 133 page lawsuit. This is about battle between Kitsch and McDonald's. McDonald's is best known for its world famous burgers, fries, and broken ice cream machines. The problem is so widespread that even the McDonald's communications team has tweeted about the issue. We have a joke about our soft serve machine, but we're worried it won't work. It's a problem nearly every McDonald's fan has likely experienced at least once in their lives. And without a functioning ice cream machine, there are no ice cream cones, no sundaes, and none of your beloved McFlurries. The problem has gotten so bad that fans are turning to social media to decry the lack of frozen treats. Thousands of frustrated customers complain about the broken machines and McDonald's operators are forced to pay for costly repairs and maintenance to keep the machines up and running. The lawsuit states that many store operators were shelling out thousands of dollars every month to repair their machines. The company who owns the machines is called Taylor. McDonald's allows Taylor's monopoly to continue for two reasons. First, independent owner operators, and not McDonald's itself, pay for Taylor's costly service and repair fees. Second, Taylor develops new commercial kitchen products exclusively for McDonald's. In 2016, it was the most common service-related complaint to McDonald's on Twitter. And if anything, the problem has only gotten worse since then. For years, there wasn't any competition for Taylor and their poorly operated machines until a company called Kitsch created a solution that would allow a computer to detect errors and essentially fix them. Kitsch was the only product on the market that was positioned to fix the soft serve machines at McDonald's. Kitsch soon gained market dominance after the largest organization of independent McDonald's operators endorsed Kitsch at its national conference. McDonald's saw Kitsch as a challenge and decided to go all in to stop their progress. In the days that followed, McDonald's director of equipment, Mike Zagorski, directed that things need to go much faster with Taylor's open kitchen development, which was moving at a turtle's pace. Taylor didn't know that the turtle always wins the race, but they couldn't resist trying to get to the finish line a little quicker by stealing. More on that in a minute. McDonald's also warned Taylor that independent restaurant operators were demanding that McDonald's integrate Kitsch into the McDonald's system. This threatened to undermine Taylor's long-standing service and repair racket that the new open kitchen device was being designed to protect. McDonald's and Taylor needed to buy more time to get open kitchen to the market. I love the language used in the lawsuit, their repair racket. It was a big business for Taylor. Think of how lucrative it would be to make money on selling a product that breaks down all the time, and then you're the only one who can fix it so you make money on repairs too. The double revenue hack. McDonald's decided to send this message to all of its operators incorrectly stating that the Kitsch software could cause injury. They also strongly recommended that all franchise operators remove the Kitsch device from their ice cream machines. McDonald's serves inedible food to its customers, so you shouldn't be surprised that they resorted to this tactic of attempting to hinder a solution that would help its customers get what they want. Indeed, a full eight months before McDonald's and Taylor's false ads, McDonald's insiders informed Kitsch that McDonald's and Taylor would fabricate safety concerns to destroy Kitsch's business. If they don't want Kitsch in the market, they're going to throw that safety stuff at you to throw you under the bus and keep putting that at you until you go away eventually. It's pretty crazy to see in writing what we all expect from large companies. There's a small competitor solving a problem with their software solution, and instead of McDonald's integrating the solution, they just went full rage mode and tried to destroy them. Rather, Taylor has intentionally created equipment reliability issues for years, and its repair and maintenance business has earned hundreds of millions of dollars in fees for repairs that Taylor itself caused. What a genius business model created by Taylor, the double revenue hack. Make $10,000 on the initial sale of your machine, then make thousands of dollars in repair revenue. To date, McDonald's and Taylor still have not released Open Kitchen. They claim in court filings that development is nearly complete. This is similar to all the crypto and MLM Ponzi schemes that exist. No, 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 we promise that the product is on the way. It's almost here. Taylor still hasn't delivered their product. Kitsch uncovered a repair racket whereby Taylor designed flawed code that caused the machines to malfunction. One of Taylor's service partners described this arrangement as a money trap and further explained that Taylor's service department will reap the benefits of the steady stream of repair bills to keep the machines up and running. If this is true, how crazy is it that Taylor conned McDonald's operators into sending them thousands of dollars in repairs on a machine that they only knew how to fix? This would be like the company putting the plumbing in your house is the only company in your city who 
who can fix any problem that arises. Conflict of interest, anyone? Who makes these ice cream machines and why don't they ever work? So uh, McDonald's has one main supplier of its ice cream machines. It's called Taylor. It's a big equipment manufacturer and they make these uh, devices for thousands of restaurants all over the country. These devices, these ice cream machines are very complicated. The ridicule McDonald's has received from the media because of the defective ice cream machines is more serious than the whimsical headlines suggest because some of the problems have alarming public health implications for consumers. This NBC News report found that 120 people were sickened after eating ice cream at their local McDonald's. That's a very small number compared to the number of people sickened after eating anything else at McDiarrhea. This image shows a typical error message seen on the Taylor machine that makes it tough to decipher what the problem is. Kitch's device looked to solve this issue by assessing the problem within the machine and notifying the user with a more legible message. I'm going to summarize the next segment that basically explains that McDonald's wanted access to Kitch's technology and software. Kitch didn't allow it for obvious reasons. McDonald's hired third parties and sent an investigative team to attempt to gain access to Kitch's trial run. This is hilarious. After scraping information from Kitch's website, Taylor attempted to purchase a KSD. A Taylor VP executive instructed their technology manager, Heather Jordan, to order a KSD through Kitch.com. Kitch flagged and then canceled Miss Jordan's order after matching her shipping address to Taylor's headquarters. Kitch was like, nope, we know who you are. Even better is what Kitch found in Discovery. This was so funny to read. The Taylor executive found out that the order was refunded and sent this email to Miss Jordan. I guess we should have ordered in stealth mode, smiley face. This was my favorite part of the lawsuit. That's so funny to me. Looks like we got caught, honey. Whoops. Next time we'll order using someone else a little less conspicuous. They found their guy. Now it's time to introduce Tyler Gamble into the story. Jonathan Tyler Gamble operates 10 McDonald's restaurants. Gamble is an independent franchise owner, and at all times relevant, he served as the equipment team lead for McDonald's National Supplier Leadership Council. According to the lawsuit, Tyler made a perfect thief. Since he owned 10 different McDonald's and played an important role with McDonald's equipment, he would make for the perfect test subject for Kitch's new products. Gamble enrolled in the Kitch trial after executing the binding Kitch trial agreement and after representing that he and his company would not use Kitch's information to build or support and or assist a third party in building or supporting products or services competitive to Kitch. Kitch had all of the McDonald's operators signed NDAs in hopes that no one was dumb enough to take their trade secrets and attempt to use it against them with competing products. Before Gamble, Taylor tried their hardest to get their hands on the software and hardware. They tried stealth mode by ordering products through its outside counsel at Brink Skilson to try to circumvent Kitch's security protocols, but Kitch identified the prospective buyer as Taylor's legal counsel and blocked the order. If you ever wondered if there were some crooked lawyers out there, this is the perfect example. They hired their lawyers to gain access to a competing product with the intention of stealing the information just to then use it on their own products. If their counsel knew why they were doing this, that should lead to them getting disbarred in my opinion. Taylor doubled down on its efforts and its counsel hired at least two private investigators using assumed names to try to avoid raising suspicion. Just like the previous orders, Kitch's security precautions flagged and thwarted these attempts from Taylor to obtain KSDs. To me, that sounds like they knew what they were doing. Hiring private investigators to gain access to a competitor's trial software. Hmm, I wonder why my clients want access to this. They blocked us, so let's hire someone else because clearly we should be given access. By 2020, news outlets began picking up stories on McDonald's ice cream machines, possibly having found a solution referring to Kitch's software. This led to many of the McDonald's operators contacting McDonald's asking how they can get their hands on the hot new software. McDonald's was like, nope, we have an agreement with Taylor. The lawsuit alleges that throughout 2020, Gamble was sharing the Kitch technology with McDonald's leadership, while McDonald's and Taylor were working on their competing product called Open Kitchen. After a large number of McDonald's franchisees approved of the Kitch technology, McDonald's went on a PR campaign falsely advertising that the Kitch products cause harm and safety concerns and that everyone should stop using it. McDonald's and Taylor had promised their new product Open Kitchen by Q1 of 2021. To date, this product still hasn't been released. Kitch experienced millions of dollars in damages because a majority of their trial participants canceled their subscription to the software after McDonald's false advertising PR campaign. Kitch was also in serious talks with prominent Silicon Valley venture capital firms to raise a $10 million Series A on a $50 million valuation. Kitch was growing at an exponential rate of double customer growth every quarter, and because of the McDonald's PR campaign, they lost a majority of their customers and weren't able to continue building new products. Kitch has lost millions in profits to date and will lose many millions in profit in the years to come. Home, Kitch's valuation has plummeted to as low as $3 million. By contrast, Taylor has continued to rake in $75 million in annual revenue from its repair racket at McDonald's and other restaurants. 
Taylor generates more revenue each year just from repairs than the total valuation of Kitsch's company at its peak. That's wild, and obviously why McDonald's and Taylor did what they could to shut it down. To summarize, Kitsch created software and hardware that would integrate with Taylor's machines that would reduce the amount of repairs needed. The machines would be operable longer and cost less money to the franchise owners. Taylor obviously didn't like that because it would reduce their massively profitable repair business. McDonald's serves their customers food a grade slightly above dog food, so of course caring about customers is low on their list. I would highly recommend everyone stop eating fast food because your life is too valuable to cut off decades by consuming trash food that is horrendous for your health. I hope McDonald's loses this lawsuit and has to pay Kitsch for the damages received. Thanks for watching.